Hello YouTube, welcome to my TED Talk. Chances are this is your first time here, so first off, thank you very much. My name is Michael, and for now, this is Set Gaming. So today I'd like to talk about cards, not decks, but cards. And the reason for that is because if you're like me, you're facing a lot of these guys, and you don't have these guys, and they're very powerful, they're very hard to acquire, and they're very hard to acquire because I'm still in the collection dead zone. So what is the collection dead zone? It's basically what I'm referring to the area between 1,000, 2,000 plus. You probably have less than half, less than 60% of the pool three cards. You can't put together a tier one deck. You can't put together a tier two deck. You can't put together all the neat little decks that content creators say are the best for featured locations. You're just kind of mishmashing the good cards you have together and finding some, some placehold filler for, uh, for the decks you think may or may not work. So how do we overcome this David versus Goliath meta? I think it's just being smart about the cards we buy from the token shop. And, you know, once we start pulling in some of these more powerful cards, we get more direction on where we should building our decks. So first off, I don't really say much about her. She's Arrow. I've done videos on her. I think if they reduced her power to zero, she'd still be in the top half of pool three cards. I think maybe if they nerfed her and she's pulling only one card or something with a stat adjustment. But for right now, she's one of the strongest cards. She's worth having. Maybe wait until the next season to see if she gets, you know, nerfed. But for now, if she goes into full strength into the next season in March, I think she's definitely at the top of the list. Next up is She-Hulk. I think this is the most broken card in Marvel Snap that nobody complains about. She's just kind of the very tip of the power level I think a Marvel Snap should have. She's good value. She's good tempo. She can work as a finisher. She can work as a filler card. She can be duplicated for shenanigans. She's very versatile. She's extremely fun to play with. Definitely worth picking up. Maybe even above Arrow if you're worried about uh, nerfs coming through. Overall, great card. Number three, I think Dr. Doom right now is the best finisher in the meta. Just the way he can sneak into lanes. You can close down things with Storm that he can get into later. There's a lot of places like Morag and Plunder Castle. Highly recommend this guy. He is top of my list because I have the first two cards recommended. And uh, I'm really feeling it. Not having him. These first three cards plus Wave is actually one of the best kind of pool three only decks. So that's another reason I think these guys are at the top of my list. So number four is Quinjet. I think he doesn't get enough credit for being as powerful as he is. He's kind of overshadowed by a couple other premium one drops that are readily available prior to pool three, Sunspot and Iceman. But this card elevates Devil Dinosaur in, in a very profound way that is not discussed enough just makes the value engine of Devil Dino work better. I think as you grow your collection with things like Maria Hill or Agent Colston or Mystique, it just fits into the deck, makes the deck a little more sneaky, a little less linear. And uh, if I was new to pool three, I would prioritize picking this guy up uh, as soon as I saw him because it's just kind of an underrated card that makes a very popular, very accessible deck work better. Number five, I'm going to cheat here a little bit. All these cards kind of do a similar thing. They're your mid-game cards that accelerate you into powerful finishing. Thor and Dracula are both scary cards your opponents have to respect when they're dropped. Electro is great in ramp, an archetype that has been around for a while and will probably stay strong. It's, uh, it's kind of like the budget pool three deck that you can just cram Electro in and then just cheat on some of your your uh, top end because you can play two six drops. Uh, Maximus and Hood, great cards just for their value. You know, I, don't, I really see Hood at the bottom of a lot of uh, tier lists, but it's surprising how many decks this card goes into. You, I can't tell you how many times I forgot that my opponent played Hood and has a one six one drop in his hand and do not account for it. Uh, you know, maybe that just says something about me being an inferior player, but yeah, it gets me a lot. And then Maximus, He's a staple. I mean, especially in this meta, I find a lot of times my opponents, especially in Thanos, uh, your opponents will have full hands, have six cards in their hands. They're maybe only drawing one card. Um, Maximus, just great value. Highly recommend him. I don't know if I'd spend tokens on him if I didn't have some of the earlier cards, but he's a great kind of complimentary card if you get lucky and you pull some of the top end. Honorable mentions, Death, Wave, they go so great. You got She Hulk in there, you got yourself a deck. Um, I think if you ever pull Death Wave or She-Hulk and one of the other ones shows up in your shop, 
it's kind of a snap buy just because they're powerful on their own. And if the other one ever shows up in your shop, you can pin it and you've got Death Wave. Wave is being run in a lot of ramp decks right now. Just a very versatile card. Uh, one of the, my first token purchases that I didn't really play with for a while, but I was glad I had her when, I, when she showed up. And then there's Magneto. Magneto is kind of like in here just because if you're brand new to pool three and you need some top end, I think Magneto is not a bad purchase. Similarly, he's versatile. He can be a little bit of a liability. I guess he, he, he varies whether his strength is, is excellent in a particular meta. If you have the tokens, if you've gotten lucky with some of the other picks, pick him up. So here's my don't get baited section. These are basically just cards I see at the top of content creators tier list. I think they're kind of overrated. Maybe they're just uh, high because their power level is high and the decks that they work in can be very powerful. But if you're starting your collection, if you're building, I wouldn't be excited to pull these. I wouldn't spend tokens on them. These are cards that are largely gimmicky or I just think overrated. First off is Destroyer. I don't really want to go too much into this guy. I just think he's overrated. Every content creator makes a video that monthly that this deck is slept on and still powerful. It's powerful, but I don't think it's competitive. I think it's predictable. I think it's underpowered as the meta has uh, been established the last two months. I think Electro really kind of makes the deck only viable when you can play De uh, Destroyer and Spectrum. I think the arrow meta kind of wrecks this guy. And overall, I just see him recommended as a, a card you should just pick up and then you can play with pool two and pool one cards and you're off to the races and you're climbing. And that is, I think, far from the truth unless, you know, at the bottom of the ladder. Next one, this is controversial. Sarah is an incredibly powerful card, but at this time, now that Surfer and Zabu are in pools five or four, um, they're basically premium cards. They're not, you know, freebie seasonal cards if you're a seasonal pass subscriber. She needs those cards to work. I think she's really only good in those cards, those decks. Her ability seems like it's the kind of thing you could plug and play in a variety of decks, but really, I think playing six drops in most cases is better than playing two, three drops. I will say I play her a lot because I play Sarah Miracle because I own Zabu, I own Mysterio, and I own Maximus. She's very powerful in that deck. It's an unassuming deck. If you don't have access to Zabu, you don't have Surfer to play. I don't think she's a good card to, to have on your radar. Mr. Negative, I don't really want to talk long about this guy. As he's obviously powerful. He's a meme favorite. Content creators always throw videos of his Mr. Negative back. He's good. I think he really shines with Bast. Again, a card that might not be very accessible to a lot of players. And uh, it's just kind of gimmicky. Similar vein, Wong. Wong is one of those, the first time you get to pull three and see this guy, he breaks your back and you, you kind of feel like he's broken. But um, if you played long enough, you, you know that you either have to counter Wong or you have to get out of the game that Wong is being played in. He's low cube win rate. He's meme -y, He's easy to disrupt. That's all I have to say about Wong. He's a fun card. If you just want to play for fun, yeah, you probably want him. But if you're serious about climbing, I think he's more of a liability. And lastly, we have Patriot. Not a card I see screaming off the top of tier list, but a card that I imagine a lot of people see. If you play card games, you're familiar with the play style. Weenie, make him bigger. Swarm. It's an easy, carefree play style. The problem is it requires a lot of pool three cards that really don't have homes anywhere else. Things like uh, Wasp and Ultron don't go in other decks. It's very susceptible to Killmonger. There's very little surprise factor. You know, your opponent usually knows you're probably playing Ultron on six and can do the math on it. Or if they have, you know, they don't have priority, can potentially Killmonger your board. So I think it's a, it's a good deck. If you manage to have the pieces, yes. Go ahead and finish it out, but I would not prioritize the uh, Patriot or the cards that go with him. So lights up. Basically, use your tokens wisely. I think these cards will help make your collection more powerful and you can grow into it better instead of focusing on one specific deck and some niche cards that you think are going to make that deck sing. I think it's better to just expand, roll with the punches, know that it's going to be a rough couple months, but if you're smart with your tokens, you can fill up your pool three collection faster and move on to uh, playing with the big boys. Thank you. If you're still around, I really appreciate you. Thumbs up would be great. Let me know what you totally disagree with and think I'm way wrong about. Happy to have a conversation or uh, sometimes I stream on Twitch. If you want to stop by, please say hello. Maybe you saw the video. Otherwise, we will see you in the next one if you come back. And as always, stay safe out there, snappers.